This is a short instructional video demonstrating creation of the pneumoperitoneum for laparoscopy. Minimal access surgical techniques are increasing in number and complexity. This is due to the advantage of reduced post-operative pain, quicker recovery time and shorter hospital stay, and fewer post-operative complications when compared to open techniques. Complications do however exist, and these can be manifest in bowel or visceral injury, or vascular injury. Creation of the pneumoperitoneum can be achieved by two methods. The open Hassan method involves an incision, usually intraumbilical, which is made through the abdominal wall under direct vision. This is low risk for delayed complications such as bowel injury, but adds to the total length of the procedure. The closed varus method involves a blind technique using a varus needle to puncture through the layers of the abdominal wall. Transumbilical access is the most common entry point. This is due to the fact that the midline abdominal wall is largely devoid of important vessels and nerves. There is no fat or muscle between the skin and the peritoneum, therefore it provides the shortest distance and the thinnest point of the abdomen to gain access to the peritoneal cavity, but there is an increased risk of major complication such as vessel damage. Abdominal wall elevation methodology is based on the theory that tenacity increases control and also elevation provides counter tension which improves proprioception. Abdominal wall elevation is performed manually in the midline suprapubic region or the bilateral paraumbilical area. Varus insertion angles vary from 45 degrees in the thin patient to 90 degrees in the obese patient and this is due to the fact that the location of the umbilicus will vary on the abdominal wall depending on increased adiposity of the patient. The varus needle is a small bore needle with a spring-loaded blunt obturator which recoils to the lower end of the needle allowing entry into the cavity without traumatizing the underlying organs. A 5 to 10 mm incision is made in the intraumbilical region through the skin and the subcutaneous tissue. The varus needle with an open tap is inserted intraumbilically at an angle appropriate to the body habitus of the patient. When the needle enters the peritoneal space, the obturator will recoil with a single or double click. A number of tests can be performed or observations can be performed to ensure that the varus needle has been inserted into the peritoneal cavity. The first is Palmer's test. This involves installation and aspiration of normal saline or local anaesthetic. During aspiration we are looking for a return of blood to indicate vascular damage or air which will indicate puncture of a hollow viscera. The syringe can be removed from the hub of the varus needle, the plunger can be pulled back partially and the syringe is reinserted to the hub of the needle. The plunger is then removed fully and we can watch as the normal saline or local anaesthetic flows freely into the peritoneal cavity. A further observation of low intra-abdominal pressure confirms peritoneal placement. Pressure should be less than 10 millimeters of mercury. We then set the level of insufflation medium to a maximum of 20 millimetres of mercury and carbon dioxide gas is insufflated into the abdomen at a rate of no more than one and a half to two litres per minute. As the carbon dioxide gas is insufflated slowly towards the maximum level of 20 millimetres of mercury we can see that when the maximum rate is reached the flow rate automatically falls to zero. In, th in this short video, we have demonstrated the steps required for safe varus needle insertion to create a pneumoperitoneum and the demonstration of a number of observations which can be employed to determine peritoneal access. Further ports can then be entered into the abdomen to continue with the rest of the operation.